Okay, in this section we get to talk about uh, derivative rules and so we we get to stop using the limit definition um, but it's good that we know the limit definition because that's that's how this stuff really works um, but these these make it uh, a lot faster to take derivatives because we've we prove them um, using the limit r definition and then they apply to many many cases um, and so let's just write down a couple of these rules I'm not actually going to prove them but you can prove them using the limit definition so that they work in all of these cases and then we just use them instead of actually doing uh, all the work. It's like you can take a, a hammer and nails and build something and then you use that thing to do other stuff. Right? Uh, so the first is the power rule. Okay, and that says that uh, if we're trying to take the derivative of x to the n, then we get n times x to the n minus 1. So we decrease the exponent by 1 and we multiply by the old exponent. Uh, there's one caveat here, right? Um, I, I don't want this to give me uh, like a division by 0. So um, we have to make sure that this works this holds for um, x and n where x to the n and x to the n minus 1 are defined. Right. So uh, sometimes it not might not work for negative x values if I've got like a half up in my, my exponent. So I have to make sure that this is well defined um, and we only we just say it only works where it is defined. Okay, uh, another rule is linearity of the derivative. And this combines a couple rules and I'll, I'll show you specifically how. So linearity of the derivative, I'm going to take the derivative of a constant a times a function f of x plus another constant b times a function g of x. Well, the linearity says the constant can be pulled out and then I can do the derivative of each of the pieces with the, the plus sign in between them. So I take a times the derivative of f plus b times the derivative of g. So I can pull out constants outside of the derivative and addition, or if b was negative, subtraction can be split up and you can do the derivative of each of the, the sumands um, separately. So this has sort of subcases that the derivative of a times f of x equals a times the derivative of f of x. So if I have a constant multiple, I get to pull that out and then the the plus or the minus works. If I use a negative b, I get a plus or a minus there. And I could also just write that as sort of the derivative. I use a as 1 and b as negative 1 to get the minus sign and just a as 1 and b as 1 to get the plus sign. f of x plus g of x equals the derivative of f of x plus the derivative of g of x and the derivative of f of x minus g of x equals the derivative of f of x minus the derivative of g of x. And this comes from a equals b equals 1. This one comes from a equals 1, b equals minus 1, right? And this one comes from a equals 1, or sorry, a equals a and b equals zero. That's where that one comes from. Okay. So there's your linearity of derivative. Um, we've also got some special functions. We're not going to talk about trig functions. Those are special functions. Those come in a later section, but we will talk about exponential functions. Not logarithms yet, but just exponentials. So the derivative of an exponential function, a to the x, that's equal to 
the natural log of a times a to the x again. So the special case in this is when a is equal to e, and then the natural log of e is just 1, so derivative e to the x equals e to the x. Taking the derivative on the exponential function with the, the natural base uh, doesn't change anything. Okay, uh, We've got the product rule and the quotient rule. And the product rule says if I'm going to take the derivative of a product of two functions, so f times g, well I get to take the derivative of each of them individually and then add that stuff together, but it looks like f of x times the derivative of g of x plus the derivative of f of x times g of x. So I'm going to add, add all of the possibilities together where I'm only taking a derivative of one of the factors. So in this case I took the derivative on the factor of g, in this case I took the derivative on the factor of f, and this extends, this extends to higher products, right? So like if I had the derivative of f times g times h times k, maybe these are all functions, well it's the same idea. I'm going to put the derivative on each one of the factors and then add all of those things together. So this is going to be f times g times h h times the derivative of k plus f times g times the derivative of h times k plus f times the derivative of g times h times k plus the derivative of f times g times h times k. So you just put the derivative on each of the factors individually, multiply the other factors to it, and then add that whole thing together. And that gives you the, the general product rule, which uh, turns out to be pretty useful at times. Okay. Uh, the book doesn't really go into details on that, but I, I like to mention that. Okay, the quotient rule. Um, so if I'm taking the derivative of a quotient, f uh, over g, well what happens is I get uh, low d high minus high d low, and it's over the square of the below, of what's below, of what's below. And so that says low is g, g is the bottom, so g times the derivative of the high, which is f as up top, minus high f times the derivative of low, which is the derivative of g, over the square of what's below, so over g squared. So take the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Okay. Um, one thing I like to mention is this is just an application of the, the product rule too. I can sort of split this up into two fractions. You get g over g squared in the first fraction, so you've got the derivative of f over g. Um, and then I'm going to write it as f and it's times the derivative of 1 over g and the derivative of 1 over g, we don't have the chain rule yet but um, when we get the chain rule we'll figure out that the derivative of 1 over g is exactly what you have here to make the quotient rule work so plus f times negative derivative of g over g squared that's the derivative of 1 over g and so we can we can do the quotient rule this way as well where we're just sort of thinking of it as the product rule because division and multiplication well they're really the same thing okay the last thing in this section is some notation for higher order derivatives and what higher order derivatives are uh, so if you take the derivative twice right the derivative of the derivative of f well I'm gonna write that as the derivative squared of f 
this is the second derivative of f. Um, and other notations for that is like f double prime is the second derivative. Uh, if you've got it as y's, maybe you have y double prime. Um, we have the d dx notation. This is the derivative of f. You can put the squared on that. Uh, you can distribute the squared to the two pieces. So maybe you have d squared over dx squared f. That's the second derivative. And this stuff all kind of generalizes um, the, the triple notation. So three little tick marks is the third derivative, y, one, two, three. Uh, you get d cubed over uh, dx cubed f. Uh, you could do d dx cubed f. You can do d cubed f. Those things all work out. And then for higher stuff, we don't just keep putting more and more tick marks at this point. Um, but you have f with a super n with an n in little parentheses up there is the nth derivative. y super n. Um, you can take the nth power of d dx and apply it to f, uh, which is d to the n over dx to the n applied to f. Or we can use the, the big D notation, d to the n of f. And so those are our notations, and they just mean take derivatives that many times. So if I had d to the fifth of x to the fifth, my power rule would give me that the first one is, so I take the derivative once, and I get the derivative of 5x to the fourth by the power rule. I take the derivative another time, I get three more that I have to do, but the power rule says it's now 20x cubed. And then two more yet, but the third one is going to be 60x squared. And then I've still got one more, but after I do this derivative I get 120x. And then the final one after I take that derivative is just 120. So the fifth derivative of x to the fifth is 120. Okay, that's all of the derivative rules that I want to talk about. I'm going to do another video where we go through using these and getting a whole bunch of examples done uh, using these derivative rules.